Alrighty, good morning. Let's get right to today's work. There are two things to consider uh, when you're doing glass tile. You need to use a, well, you need, I love when people tell me I need to do stuff. It's recommended that you use a glass tile thin set mortar. This is specific for glass tile for a couple of reasons. First of all, glass is not permeable. Ooh, glass is not, what the hell? Glass. Glass is not a permeable um, surface, so this mortar is designed to get a good bite on a solid, smooth surface such as glass that is not permeable. Secondly, they allege that this stuff doesn't uh, have any reactivity to reflective backings that are on, and I'll show you what that is on this tile. Um, oftentimes, glass block has, oh, there's the screw. Ooh. Damn it, I lost that the other day. Oh well. Uh, tangent, right? Ooh, shiny objects. The uh, glass tile is backed with oftentimes a reflective backer or some sort of backing material. This stuff alleges that it won't have a reactivity to that and cause a discoloration or a delamination of the uh, reflective material. With that being said, I have in my younger and dumber days not use this on glass back tile. I've used standard thin set mortar and it's worked just fine. I've never had a problem with reactivity to reflective paper and I've never had any tile fall off the wall quite honestly. The second thing you need to consider is yeah, you need to use a diamond blade that is specific for glass and this one's a um, this one really is a need to have. It is a need to have. I have tried cutting glass tile with a traditional diamond blade. I don't know how much you can see uh, with a traditional diamond blade and it doesn't work. It gets red and hot and things spall and they crack and that's no bueno. So for however this is designed, a diamond cutting blade that's specific to glass is what you need. So here's something interesting. I was just going to paper out, let me set that there. I was just going to paper out the top of the countertops, right, so I don't get schmutz on the sile stone. <clears throat> you know, kind of checking out the rocks, looking at the colors now that I've got nice under cabinet lights. Every stone in here is a wonderful shade of the blacks and the grays and the whites and the whatnots. And then you come all around and then I'm cleaning and then there's this. <laughs> you think that was an accident? Or do you think some worker that was doing this threw one red stone in the mix just for fun to see where it would show up? There's not another red stone. There's not another red stone in this. I don't know. That's funny. Doesn't make a difference of anything and anything, but... Uh, Cracks me up. All right, gotta go. So I started getting excited thinking I was gonna just start throwing tile around here. And realized I hadn't framed the doors in yet and trimmed them out. Uh, that'll make a big difference as to where my tile ends because I'm 99% certain I'm going to run the backsplash tile right into the edge of the, I'm just putting standard three rib, three rib, uh, which is like two and a quarter, I think, or two and a half. So yeah, so I got everything papered out. And then I looked and I was like, oh, that's right. I need to box these in and, and trim them out. And uh, I'm just using regular fring finger jointed pine. But a quick tip on these guys, I like doing a quarter inch reveal. Sometimes you can do as little as an eighth and still make it look right. So I take my combination square and I always scribe guide marks kind of across the... Uh, just a little so I know when I'm laying the trim out exactly where it needs to be and then this gives me an exact dimension because that's going to be in theory the inside corner of my trim my surface mount trim and uh, that gives me a perfect reference as to how long these pieces need to be that's the inside dimension would be the inside length of the 45 and then uh, you do that on both sides just make these little marks here and everything can stay nice and square. So there's your uh, carpentry tip for the day. I'll be right. So we're going to call that piece installed and done. The gap is pretty consistent throughout. 
It's close. It's very close. Mm, yeah, it's gonna have to do. It's a lot more time than uh, than I should have spent on that, but that's right where your eye is, you know? You walk by this thing, at least my eye would always be. And the painter's got some work to do to make this casing look pretty, but it's nothing. A little sandpaper and some putty won't cure. It's not my area of work. So now, now, oh yeah, now I can go eat lunch. <laughs> this took whew, way, I figured two hours. What time did I get here? At nine, ten? It took three hours. I don't know why. My damn phone kept ringing. Uh, whatever, who cares? It's my day. It's my time. Uh, I'm going to uh, get crack a on lunch and I'm going to get some crack a on some tiles. All right, so I'm fresh back from lunch. Well, I'm not fresh, but. Uh, yeah, how about that? How about we take the lens cap off? What a dumbass. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. It's uh, not fresh. I'd rather take a nap. You know, when you got so many things going on that you just kind of shut down, you get overwhelmed. You want to do it all, but you don't want to do anything. That's kind of where I'm at right now. So, ah, oh, man, <clears throat> I just need to shut up, put on my big boy pants and get on with my day. Here's a tip. When you're spanning an opening gap like this, and this tip comes to you via my own personal experience uh, that cost me a couple of days worth of labor. Um, to fix <laughs> it was fucked When you're spanning an open gap like this with especially tile like this You need to be sure that the corners are level see I built these or I should say I installed these cabinets So I know they're level But you need to verify that they're level. I always draw a line to be level Okay, I draw a line on the wall problem being I did some backsplash in a house about four years ago. I didn't, it was a brand new construction, townhouse construction. I didn't really pay attention to that gap because I got complacent in my ability to do tile. When I was coming around the corner and I was using this glass set similar to this, but it was a, a fast set because I wanted to grout the same day. For example, I came around here with the tile, came around here, I started this way by the time, and I was going up, 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 up. By the time I got to here, I realized that the left surface was five eighths of an inch higher. So I tried to fudge it, but things had already gotten a bite, so I was messing with it, messing with it, and it just didn't look right. So I had to come in the next day, and I, I tore all the whole wall out. I had to re I had to <laughs> re-mud the wall. And then I had to fudge this grout line starting in that far corner. I fudged the bottom grout line like a 32nd of an inch each, each 12 by 12 square because it was mastic tile similar to this. I had to fudge and space and fudge and space to make it for that 5 eighths of an inch. And quite honestly, at least with my eye, if you still look down the wall like that, you saw it dive. But at that point, there's nothing I can do. What I should have done was I should have walked away from that job from the beginning. I should have looked at it and said, yeah, this isn't going to look right, or at least steered him into a different direction of tile. Because with all these horizontal lines, you know, you try to fudge five-eighths of an inch, and it looks like it's taken a dive. But I, I, I bit it off. I took the job. So I ate the cost of the additional materials and labor and everything, and I made it as close to right as possible. But Alrighty. Well, I'm going to set you down for a minute. I'm going to put my earplugs in, or my earphones in which act as noise canceling earplugs. And I'm gonna start sticking some tile down. I'll bring you in if anything gets exciting. Oh man. Uh, so mosaic tile is uh, absolute test of patience in that, especially this glass is so small. These individual pieces are so small. They get hot so fast. If you don't have it constantly under a cool bath of water when you're cutting it, uh, it's gonna spall and crack and it's garbage and it goes. But here's where it is, where the corner meets there, you're always gonna have pieces, right? So what I do is I set the two corner pieces and then I don't fill in the gaps until I start cutting around plugs and start 
you know, cutting around cabinets and you start getting a lot of little various pieces here, for example, and then you come around here and you go, oh, yeah, that one will fit right there. And you stick it in there and it's like a giant game, it's a giant puzzle. That way you're not cutting up full size pieces to make up the little corners. Because trust me, as these boxes go along, I'm going to have tons of various little chunks. Uh, I always tend to run a row of nails, or I always run a row of nails down there. Two reasons. First of all, once you start spreading mortar around, sometimes you lose your perspective of where your pencil line is. And secondly, when the tile's kind of out in the field like that, it can have a tendency to sag. So, using several nails in that line, the tile rests on the nails just like it would be resting on the countertop. 330, 435, 30. I'll probably put another couple hours in. Yeah, I got enough mortar. I still have that's one box of mortar did that wall with that much left over. So one more box ought to do there. There I need to grab another one. I only got two boxes. Today's Friday. Tomorrow's Saturday. Uh, I should have help with me tomorrow. I think my daughter's working with me. So Kitty? So uh, my daughter's working with me tomorrow. I'm gonna get the floor installed because this is kind of a one-person, uh, one-person gig, and she's a good cutter. So I haven't had her cut glass tile yet, but I've had her cut the ceramic and porcelain tile. So she can be my my cut kid, and I can do the laying out of this floor. And I think in one day we can have this banged out pretty easily. So we'll see. She says she wants to work with me tomorrow, earn some cash. So. Cash is good for her. All right, I'm going to keep rolling, and I'll bring you guys back when we get to the end of the day. Ah, uh, the shadows go long this Friday afternoon, August 26th. I'm not even sure what time it is. Ooh, piece of candy. I know, uh, I know I'm done for the day. Let's go take a look. Money. There's the floor. Pretty dark. In there. Let's take a look and see where I ended. Set that there. I don't like leaving. I don't like leaving dirty tile either. Look, everything's kind of shifting a little bit. I gotta stay here a little bit longer and make sure I don't get any shifts. I came through and I wiped everything down because uh, it's much easier to clean it now. I'm still crooked. Damn it. That's. Uh, it's easier to clean tile now, clean the tile now before the mortar fully sets. Everything's shifting a little bit, damn it all. Hold on, I gotta put you down, pay attention, hold on. Why are you busting my bowls? Don't touch it. Anyhow, that's where we're at, water. It's got a lot more purple in it now that it's under the LED lights. I mean, I know it had, I mean, I know it had purple, but uh, it just, I think it looks good. I'm digging it. Imagine the stainless steel appliances, stainless steel and black appliances, stove, dishwasher, cabinet depth, refrigerator means the refrigerator is going to come out just about as far as this cabinet here. So it doesn't take up too much uh, space. Uh, floor space. <laughs> Time is it? 6.15 Friday. That's my Friday night, ladies and gents. Here. I'm going to call it good. I'm going to get everything cleaned up and back. Then I'm going to come in, get one more look at these tiles, make sure nothing has migrated. If I have my helper here tomorrow, Saturday, I'm going to do the floor. Because we'll be able to knock this floor out in a day, the two of us. If not, if I'm alone tomorrow, I'll just continue along with the backsplash and deal with the floor next week. Oh, I love it. Looking good. All right, got to go, got to run. See you.